work. Promise keep light in the darkness, my God. And that is who you are. You are here, touching every heart. I worship you. I worship you. Oh, 
you to turn with me into the book of Philippians and uh, I want to I want to uh, 
speak from uh, this chapter. And a few minutes ago, we sung the song, I've Come to Worship. How many like that song, I've Come to Worship? And in that song, as verse says, I'm going to lift my hands till I can reach heaven. And I'm going to shout your name till the walls come falling down. So uh, uh, that's something that we need to do. And uh, uh, I like that part, I'm going to shout your name until the walls come falling down. And I'm going to speak a little bit this morning uh, concerning uh, uh, some of the names of, of the Lord. Uh, uh, not all of them, but some of the names of, of the Lord and and if we can get a revelation of that, let me tell you, we could speak it, we could shout it, and we can believe it. And uh, things will happen and things will take place. But I want you to notice here in uh, Philippians, the third chapter, and beginning at verse 4, the Apostle Paul says, Though I might also have confidence in the flesh... If any other man think of that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I the more. And the reason he said that was because he was a Pharisee and he was a Hebrew of the Hebrew and he was a, 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 of the royal seed, you know, the stock of Israel. And he said, If any other man think of that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more. He said, I was circumcised the eighth day. I was a stock of Israel of the tribe of Benjamin. I was a Hebrew of the Hebrew uh, as touching the law of Pharisee. And concerning zeal, he had a zeal. Concerning zeal, persecuting the church and touching the righteousness which is in the law blameless. But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ? Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but done, that I may win Christ, and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. I want you to notice verse 10. Paul said that I may know him. That I may know him. And the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death. Let's bow our heads one more time. Father of heaven, we honor you, and we thank you for your mercy and your goodness, and we pray for your anointing and your unction. Pray for wisdom. Touch our hearts and minds this morning. Lord, let us know who you are. Let us reveal it to us. For we need that, Lord. We need to know, and we honor you, and we thank you. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. <clears throat> the Apostle Paul here in verse 10, he made a statement here. He said that I may know him, that I may know him, and uh know the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death. Uh, in that statement, uh, Paul had a desire to know him. And I want to use for my thought to, today a revelation of who he is. Uh, do you know who God is? Do you know who God is? is uh, do you know what he's like? 
uh, what, what is his character? Do you know him? Somebody might say, well, hey, he's, he's, he's my Savior. Or he's God. And I'm, I'm, I'm so thankful that, that he is our Savior. But let me tell you, until we have a revelation of who he is, we're going to struggle in this walk with Jesus Christ. We're going to have struggles in our life. We're going to have struggles in our, in our faith. We're going to have struggles in our service. We're going to have struggles in our walk. Uh, we're going to be up and down. How many likes that? Oh, boy, feeling great in the Lord. Oh, I feel terrible. Up and down. And I want to tell you, there's a, there's a clue, there's a remedy for that. And that is having a revelation of who God is. I believe sometimes when we're like that, we really don't have a revelation of who God is. We have, a, oh, we know he's our Savior. He saved me. But um, uh, how do you see God? Uh, how do you see him? Uh, do you just see him as your savior? Or, uh, you know, uh, well, he, he brought me out of sin. Let me tell you, I see him as a, as a God of the mountains <laughs> that we climb, hard climbing those mountains. He's God of those mountains. And he's also God of the valleys. Those things that we go through in life, we have to know who he is in order to, uh, and when I, uh, when, uh, when I have a revelation of who he is, that helps me to contend with everything that I face in life. It'll help you to contend with everything that you face in life, everything that you meet up with every day. If you've got a revelation of who he is and you know who he is, let me tell you, it, 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 will, it will establish you. It will uh, strengthen you. It will settle you. So, uh, you know, I don't worry about a lot of stuff. Brother David, you mean you don't worry? I, let me tell you, I, I guess I'm the least worried person <laughs> that I know of. Everybody else worries more than I do. And I don't worry so much about things. Uh, and uh, what worries that I've had lately, uh, some worries, is about you. And about the church, what you're going through, the sickness that you're having in your families and in yourself, and the things that you're contending with all the time. Uh, you know, we're, we're in a very difficult time. We're in a, a, a very uh, uh, trying time. And... Uh, my concern is, is the people of God, uh, what they're going, is my brothers and sisters, what they're facing. And uh, let me tell you, we're facing some things. We're facing some difficult times. And uh, uh, people are suffering and they're going through things. So I want us to look uh, this morning at uh, uh, just three revelations of who God is. And I think that'll help us if we understand who God is. You and I, both of us, all of us, need a revelation for ourselves. You don't need just, uh, uh, you don't need me to have a revelation that's not going to help you. 
You need a revelation yourself. You need to know who God is for yourself because uh, your faith hinges on that. And uh, he's more than a savior. He's more than a savior. And I thank God that he's a savior, but I want you to know he's more uh, than that. And you and I need to know that. Oh my, we need to have a revelation who God is. Uh, who is he? We have in Genesis, the 14th chapter, we have a, a revelation that is given to uh, Abraham. At that time, he was called Abram. And a revelation that uh, uh, Abraham had, that God gave him, that gave him strength and gave him uh, victory and gave him something to establish his faith on and to look to God to. Now, there were some kings that came against Sodom and Gomorrah. And uh, they, they, they battled against Sodom and Gomorrah. They overthrew those, those kings and they took spoil. All the cities, I mean, let me tell you, it was wagon train loads of goods, of wealth and plunder that they took from those cities. And they took people away from those cities. Some ran to the mountains, some that wasn't killed, they ran to the mountains, and, uh, but they took people uh, with them, no doubt to make slaves out of them. And Lot, Abraham's nephew, was taken also. Someone came to Abraham and said, uh, these kings, they've, they've uh, took all the goods and the spoils of Sodom and Gomorrah, uh, and uh, they took the people, and they took your nephew, Lot. Let me tell you, uh, I don't, you know, Sodom and Gomorrah, God to overthrow them. God knows the future. But Abraham went after them. He had 318 armed, trained soldiers. And he went after those, those kings. And when he caught up with, with them, he whipped them and battled against them and took back all the goods, everything that they took, all the wealth and all the people and lot. Now, Abraham, the reason he went after them, he didn't go after them because of the wealth or because of the people. He went after them because his nephew was taken captive. And after this great battle, here comes Abraham and his men with a big caravan of people uh, coming back over the mountains, wagon loads of goods and of wealth and all the people. And the king of Solomon, uh, uh, king of Sodom, came out. And oh my, he was so glad of all that Abraham had done. And he told Abraham, said, said, just keep all the stuff. Let me tell you, those wagon trains of stuff. Just keep it all. You can have it all. Just give me the people back. Abraham said to the king of Sodom, I lifted up my hands to God that I wouldn't take even a shoe latchet, a thread. I don't want anything. You can have the people. You can have, have uh, all the, the wealth. All I wanted was Lot. Hallelujah. So... Melchizedek, priest of the Most High God, he was there at Jerusalem. And uh, Melchizedek came 
to Abraham. And I want you to notice what he said to Abraham after he rescued Lot. Melchizedek said to Abraham, Blessed be Abram of the Most High God, the possessor of heaven and earth. Oh, glory. The possessor of heaven and earth. No wonder, uh, no wonder Abraham told the king of Sodom, I don't want nothing. My God owns the cat of a thousand hills. I just got a revelation that he is the most high God. There's none besides him. There's none any bigger than him. There's none that can be compared to him. I have a revelation that he is the possessor of heaven and earth. Why would I want your wealth? Why would I want those uh, wagon loads of wealth? Oh, my. I've got a revelation that he owns it all anyhow. Oh, my. He owns everything that you can look around and see. He owns that. <laughs> so... He had a revelation of who God was. And that's something that we need to uh, have a revelation of who God was. And Abraham in this revelation of, uh, of Jehovah, uh, the name that he gave uh, to Jehovah that it meant was El Leon. It means uh, God most high, creator, possessor of heaven and earth. Abraham wasn't going to lean on this world, and this world's good. Let me tell you, this world will let you down. We're going through a time when people are out of work and people are struggling in business and people are uh, having a hard time. But I, I, I want you to know if they've got a revelation of who he is. <laughs> oh my, he's the possessor of heaven and earth. I'll just, I'll just uh, receive what he Let's fall down to me like the manna uh, in the days of old that it rained down manna. I'll just wait on that. I don't have to worry about it. Let me tell you, if you're worried about what uh, your uh, the, the ends to be met, you're going to worry all the time. But let me tell you, if you know who he is, if you've got a revelation that he, he owns all of it, and he's, he possesses all of it. Oh, glory. When, uh, when uh, things are not working out with us, he owns it all. I've got confidence that he's going to take care of me. I've got confidence that he is going to take good care of me. <laughs> the Apostle Paul says, but my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. I just believe that he's got it. I just believe that he wants to give it <laughs> to you and I. His mercy is new every single morning. So he owns it all. He possesses everything. And uh, he's got it all in control. Do you know that? Do you have a revelation that he's got everything in control? I guess that's the reason I don't worry about things so much. <laughs> I know that he's got everything in control. Oh, my. In this mad, mad, mad world. Ain't there a movie like, uh, called that, Mad, Mad World? Uh, the God that we serve has got everything in control. Oh, you, you, let me tell you. 
Oh, my. Let me just come down and talk. Oh, my. You, if, you're, if you're listening to the news, most of liberal news especially, we might as well dig a hole and bury ourselves in it. I want to tell you. I mean, even, even, even Biden said we're in for a dark winter. <laughs> oh, my, my, we're in for a dark winter. I want to tell you there's things that's happening uh, in our world, that's for sure. But let me tell you, he's got everything in control. It's not over. All God has to say is dark winter leave, and it'll leave. Do you have a revelation that he is God most high and possessor of heaven and earth? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He had a revelation that God can supply needs. Hallelujah. He, he will make a way, folks. He will supply needs. Glory to God. You might not know where to come from. You might not know how you're going to get it. But God, he sees you. And he knows how to, how to send it your way. Oh, glory to God. My, he might just tell you, get your fishing pole and go down to the river and cast a hook in, and the first fish you uh, bring up, open its mouth. I've got a piece of money <laughs> in that fish's mouth. Oh, glory to God. Let me tell you, we need to have revelation that he, he has everything. Now, uh, in the 17th chapter, Abraham received another revelation of who God is. The Bible says in verse 1, when Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said, I am the almighty God. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. And where he said be thou perfect, he's not talking about being perfect spiritually. He's talking about being perfect in faith. Knowing who he is, knowing who God is. So he said, I am the almighty God. That phrase almighty here uh, was a revelation to Abraham. And it was El Shaddai. And it meant uh, God was all powerful and all sufficient. All powerful. All God is wanting us to have a revelation that He's all powerful and He's all sufficient. Hallelujah. How many do you know that He's all powerful? I know He's all powerful. <laughs> I know He's all sufficient. All powerful. Uh, El Shaddai. He was letting Abraham know that he was faithful to his word. He had promised Abraham that his family, that his seed 
was going to be as the stars in the sky and multitude in the sand by the seashore innumerable. He had promised Abraham that many years before. Now, Abraham is, uh, uh, I guess, about 87, 88 years old now. And he's, he's struggling. He don't know who God is. He don't know that he's all-powerful and all-sufficient. But he knows God promised him a child. And he's getting older all the time. And his wife is getting older all the time. And he probably thinks, man, I'm going to have to help God out. Or Sarah did. I'm going to have to help God out. Uh, we have no children. They didn't have a revelation that he's all-powerful and all-sufficient. God wanted them to know that he is that. He wants you and I to know that he's all-powerful and all-sufficient. So Sarah, <coughs> she began to tell Abraham, uh, just take my handmaiden and marry her, and she'll, she'll give you a child. And, of course, Abraham did that. And Ishmael was born. But that wasn't the promise of God. Let me tell you something. You don't have to help God out in anything. If you know that he's all-powerful and all-sufficient, just let him do it. Just let him work. Just let him be in control. You step out of the way and say, uh, you're El Shaddai. You're all powerful. You're all sufficient. Just, just do your thing, Lord, and watch what he will do. Lots of times when we try to work it out, they nobody works things out that goes well. If God don't work it out, it's not going to be worked out. But if God works it out, it is perfect. It is exactly right. So Ishmael was born. And when Ishmael was about 13 years old, Abraham began to talk to God and said, you know, this is the heir. And the Lord said, no, that's not the one. And Abraham says, Lord, I'm 99 years old. The Lord told him, I'm all powerful. You might be 99 years old. We might walk in this church and, and <clears throat> oh my, I can't hardly make it. Let me tell you. We need to realize, now I'm not making fun of uh, folks that's having a hard time, because folks do, but let me tell you, I've got a revelation of God that he's all powerful. Nothing is beyond his hand. There is no limit on him. <laughs> so at 99 years old, Sarah, 90 years old, a baby is born into that family. And let me tell you, uh, what he thought was impossible, let me tell you, things are possible with God. With man, it's impossible. But, oh my, Sarah walks out to the fence and uh, just... Show the other ladies her stomach. Hallelujah. Can you see that old woman? 
<laughs> oh, glory to God. She had such smiles on her face that even the wrinkles was gone. Oh, just look at me. I'm ready to have a child. 90 years old. My husband is 99 years old. Oh, glory to God. And we found out that he was El Shaddai, that he was able to, he was all powerful, and he, and he was able to do it. I want you to know God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. If you've got a revelation of what God can do or what God is, hang on to that revelation. And when they were singing, I've come to worship, I'm going to lift my hands till I can reach heaven. I'm going to shout your name until the walls come falling down. Sometimes we need to just shout El Shaddai. Oh, my. Uh, have you been doing that? El Shaddai. Oh, you're El Shaddai. You're the all-sufficient. You're all-powerful. You can do anything. There's nothing beyond uh, what you're able to do. You, your hand is not short that it cannot save. Hallelujah. So a revelation. We need a revelation of who God is. Let me tell you, if you're going to just stick with all the time, and that's the only revelation that you've got is he's your savior. You are going to walk feebly in this life because there's so many things that comes against us. I am persuaded that nothing, uh, nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. I have a revelation that he is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that I asked or what I think. My revelation, our revelation that God wants us to have of him is more than just being the Savior. He wants you to have revelation that a that'll lift you up and where you won't get discouraged and where you won't drag around, where you, uh, uh, where you just walk over top of giants. Oh, my, every obstacle that comes in our way, let me tell you, God will give you power to overcome all of that. Glory to God. So Isaac was born. Hallelujah. Oh, my. You know, the Bible tells us that one. Stand up here, brother. You can stand right there. One can chase a thousand. Did you know that? <laughs> You've got to revel. Stay there. One can chase a thousand. Oh, my, let a thousand demons get around you. You can chase them off. <laughs> and the Bible says two can put 10,000 to flight. He's all powerful. He's all sufficient. Oh my, we need to understand that that God is with us. Y'all can sit down. So don't ever say poor little old me. Woe is little me. <laughs> poor old me. Let me tell you folks, when I look at my myself and how feeble I am. And I look at myself how little I am. I'm going to be discouraged. Oh my. But when I look at how big he is and how powerful he is, 
Oh, glory. I, I told Brother John yesterday, John uh, Lefevers, we were talking on the phone, and every time I talked to him, he before we hang up, he said, Brother David, let, uh, pray for me. <clears throat> and I told him that old song that we used to sing. We don't sing it no more. We should sing it sometime or another in our lifetime again. <clears throat> I'm going to walk right out of this valley lift my hands and praise the Lord ain't gonna let no troubles get me down why should I sit here till I die I don't know the rest of it I'm gonna walk right out of this valley and I told John that and sometimes folks let me tell you uh, let's quit looking at ourselves real little because we're nothing anyhow, but he's all powerful and all sufficient. Just lift your head up. He said, I'll give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means harm you. So I just, I just... I'm expecting to be in heaven one of these days. I expect going there. I expect to whip every devil. <laughs> Some of them's harder than others. But I expect to whip every devil that comes against me because he's all powerful. And he's all sufficient. Oh, glory to God. I'm no match. You're no match for the devil. But greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Glory to God. El Shaddai. Hallelujah. Paul said that, uh, that uh, Abraham, who against hope, believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations and that God calls those things which are not as though they were. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. And he was not weak in, in faith, but he, he staggered not at the promises of God through unbelief but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. When, he, when we have this revelation of who God is, we, we have a revelation that he is who he says he is and that he can do what he says he can do. Glory to God. And when we have that revelation of, of that, uh, our soul can just rest and you know, I just, I just rest in the Lord. Just rest in the Lord. How, why should I worry when I'm in God's hands? Oh, my, that brother Herbert Gibson preached that message. Why should I worry when I'm in God's hands? And uh, when, uh, when you and I will have... Uh, confidence in the things that he does for us because he's all powerful the last little revelation that I'm, I'm going to give you is uh, not meant to be real long like I have been I, I've already been too long but a revelation of uh, that God gave to Abraham Abraham at this time is 130 years old. His son Isaac is 30 years old. And God speaks to Abraham and says, I want you to take your son, your only son, Isaac, and go to one of the mountains of Moriah and offer him as a sacrifice. Moriah was about 50 to 60 miles away. It was about a three-day journey. And Abraham took a, the censer with fire in it. And for three days he walked 
to Morai. And Isaac, his son, carried the wood. And uh, on the way there, Isaac said, Dad said, here's the fire, here's the wood, where's the sacrifice? And Abraham said, Son, God himself will provide a lamb for a sacrifice. So they get up on the mountain and build an altar. And let me tell you, Isaac must have had a revelation of who God was too. Because you ain't going to tie a 30-year-old man down. And you're an old man, 130. You're not going to tie a 30-year-old man down on an altar and and stab him and burn him. Uh, and Abraham, uh, Isaac knew that God was the one that supplies. And so Isaac just laid himself down. He was a type of Jesus Christ. Jesus gave himself up, sacrificed himself for you and I. And they bound him, Abraham bound him, laid him on the altar and lifted the knife to stab through the heart of his son and God called out to Abraham, 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 touch not the lad, because now I know that you fear me, because you've obeyed me. And Abraham looked around, and out in the out from the altar was a ram that was caught in bushes by its horns, and Abraham got that ram and sacrificed it. And uh, let me tell you, uh, he named that place. He got another revelation of God. He named that place Jehovah Jireh, which means God will provide or God will see to it. Everything you face, don't get worried. God will see to it. I've got confidence in him that he will see to it. He will provide. He will make the way. Hallelujah. So let me tell you, uh, we need a revelation, revelation of who he is. Let me, uh, when was the last time that you, went to God with that revelation you're all powerful you're God almighty you're El Shaddai you're all sufficient you're the provider you're the one that sees to it